Hey guys, welcome to Kids Church at New Covenant. What's going on at your house? You're sitting around eating chocolate chip ice cream, sitting around in your pajamas. Are you still in your pajamas? You know what? You might as well be because you're not really going anywhere yet. I just wanted to touch base with you guys and check in with you and pray with you guys more than anything. I know that there's been a lot of stuff talked about and a lot of things on Facebook and, and I just ask that you will give me about five, maybe not even five minutes, but we're just going to pray real quick before we get started, just like we do in regular kids church. And I just want to pray peace and pray a blessing over your homes. And then we're going to get started with kids church. We do have a really special surprise. Okay. So bow your heads with me. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you, God, for these kids. I thank you, Lord, that you are our protection. You are our peace speaker. I thank you, Lord, for everyone that is listening and they hear my voice and they are agreeing with me. God, I thank you because the faith that these kids have is amazing. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that you have given to me and others to, to pour into their life. And I just ask, God, that your presence will fill their homes today, tomorrow, and every day, and in the days to come. Lord, we just ask that you will be with them, be with their families, their moms, their dads, that patience will be manifested in their homes, and that peace will rule in their hearts and lives, and that there will be no fear from here on forward in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Okay. So what I wanted to say real quick, what we always do when we come into Kids Church on Sundays, we usually just um, review. And I want to ask you guys, we've been talking in the month of March, we've been talking about kings and queens, right? So the first king that we learned about, what was his name? Josiah. And how old was Josiah? Josiah, whenever he became king, God chose him to be king, remember? He was seven. Exactly right. The next week, we learned about another young boy that God chose. And his name was Joash. You are right. How old was he? He was seven. You are exactly right. Then the next week, we talked about another, but this time it was a queen. You guys remember what her name was? Esther. Esther was the one that saved her whole group of people from dying. <laughs> and to me, that makes me think of maybe kind of what's going on in the world today. Because there is a lot of crazy stuff that's been going on, a lot of crazy things that we hear, and maybe it's not even true. The things that we see on Facebook, the things that we see on the news, the things that our friends talk about. I want to give you some truths today to get you through this week, to get you through in the weeks to come. I want to share a scripture with you, and it is in 1 Peter 2 verse 9. The reason why we talked about different kings and queens was because I wanted you guys to understand that no matter what age that these kings and queens were in the Bible, God still chose them because he saw their heart. He saw their faith and he saw everything about them. Let me read the scripture to you. It says, let me get my granny glasses on. 1 Peter 2.9 says, But you are God's chosen treasure. Priests who are kings, a spiritual nation set apart as God's devoted ones. He called you out of darkness to experience his marvelous light. And now he claims you as his very own. He did this so that you would broadcast his glorious wonders throughout the world. 
Guess who's next in line? That we're gonna talk about today, about being chosen as a king and as a priest of this nation, of where we live today. It's you, it's me, it's all of his children that have accepted him, that believe in him, that receive his word, that receive his promises from the Bible. That's where we get the truths, is from his Bible, is from his word. And so I wanna encourage you, I want you guys to see yourself this week as the next king, as the next queen for this week in Kids Church, because that's what we've been talking about, kings and queens for the month of March. And we have, this is the next, next we've got one more Sunday here in March that we're gonna be talking about kings and queens. So what I wanted to talk, okay. another place. I think we're kind of losing some, losing some uh, reception or something. Okay, come with me. Follow me. We're gonna, we're gonna um, head out to another place where we've got a little bit more reception. Okay, come with me. We're gonna head in here. Good job, cameraman. All right, we're gonna come in here. This might, we might have better reception out this way. That might work better. Can you guys hear me better now? All right, okay. Sorry about that. You just never know what's gonna go on when you go live. Okay, something else that I wanted to talk to you about um, was, did you guys get a chance to watch that video um, last, when was, what day was it? Yes, last, yesterday, or maybe this morning. There was actually a sighting of Rexy. Remember the green dinosaur that came to Kids Church? Well, he helped talk about the whole armor of God. And um, he, we had some good pieces that we were talking to him about. And, and he was teaching. Well, he was kind of teaching you guys. And you were teaching him. Because I don't know if y'all realize, Rexy was kind of a nervous dinosaur. To be as big of a dude as he was, he was a little nervous. Did you ever notice that? Um, so anyway, someone told me that they saw him and I haven't, I haven't seen him and I haven't, I haven't heard from him or anything. I thought maybe if he was close back to Smith Center, he might, you know, give me a call or something. But anyway, um, I just wanted to, to see, let, let you guys know if you happen to see him, let me know. Send me a message on Facebook. Have your mom or dad or grandma or somebody text me or call me. Let me know. And, and I want to make sure that I get to see him. Um, so anyway, so I just wanted to check on you guys and see. Him. <gasps> Sorry, I forgot to turn my phone off. Hang on. Well, it says it's local. Hang on a minute. Hello, this is Patsy. Oops. You what? He what? Hello? Slow down. I, I, I can't understand you. Slow. Who, who is this? It's, it's Rexy. It, it is? Where, where are you? I've heard that you were close to Smith. So you're, you're by the slide? No, you're, you're on the floor? You're out at the sea? What? I don't understand what. What? What is it? You slow down. It's you don't have to be afraid. Listen, listen. 
don't you want to hold this for me? I won't touch you. Just hold the paper. Squeeze. Close your fingers. There you go. You hold that. Try to look at that, that camera there. I'm going to read this to you because, guys, I want you to understand something. Remember I was talking about the word is where all of God's promises and all of God's truths come from. Psalm 91 says, The person who rests in the shadow of the Most High God will be kept safe by the Mighty One. I will say about the Lord, He is my place of safety. He is like a fort to me. He is my God, and I trust in him. He will certainly save you from hidden traps and from deadly sickness. Amen. Did you hear that? He will cover you with his wings. Under the feathers of his wings, you will find safety. He is faithful. He will keep you safe like a shield or a tower. You won't have to be afraid of the terrors that come during the night. You won't have to fear the arrows that come at you during the day. And you won't have to be afraid of the sickness that attacks in the darkness. You won't have to fear the plague that destroys at noon. A thousand may fall dead at your side. Ten thousand may fall near your right hand. But no harm will come to you. You will see why. You will see with your own eyes how God punishes sinful people. The Lord is the one who keeps you safe. So let the Most High God be like a home to you. Then no harm will come to you. No terrible plague will come near your tent. The Lord will command his angels to take good care of you. They will lift you up in their hands. Then you won't trip over a stone. You will walk all over lions and cobras. You will crush mighty lions and poisonous snakes. The Lord says, I will save the one who loves me. I will keep him safe because he trusts in me. He will call out to me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will save him and honor him. I will be in a full life. I will save him. That is Psalm 91. To me, it sounds like some amazing promise and some amazing truth that God has for you. Did you hear how many times it says that I don't have to fear? I don't have to be afraid. And guys, that still, even that word that was written 2,000 years ago, it's still true for you, Rexy. It's still truth for you. Every girl, every mom and dad, grandma and grandpa, aunt and uncle, every person that's listening, his word is still true. It says that if we, we can hide under the shadow of his wing, under the shadow of the Almighty. Have you guys ever built a fort? Whether maybe inside of the house or outside of the house. What did that fort do? Did you feel safe? Did you feel like you were protected? If you, if you built a fort outside, you might. If you built a fort outside, it might have even protected you from the sun, the heat, the rain, the bird poop. If you, if you built it underneath a tree. So if you've ever built a fort, maybe with pillows in your house, you felt protected. You felt safe, right? So, Rexy, this is just a little example. In kids' church, we always love to play with this parachute. And we always do just different games and stuff like that. But today, I wanted to illustrate something to you. That this is like a covering that God says that he is for you. And he says that when you, I will hide you under my wing. And the reason, does God have wings? No. But the reason why he says that in scripture is because it's kind of like, have you ever seen a, a mother hen cover and protect her little chicks? She raises that wing up and causes and wants those little chicks to come under that old, the, her wing. And she protects them and she keeps them safe. That's kind of what God was saying. So like this parachute, he says, I will hide you under 
the shadow of the Almighty. You ready? So we're going to get under just like a four. You ready? One, two, three. And he hides you, Rexy, because you trust in God, because you trust in him, and because you receive his promises, we can stay hidden. Let's do this together. We can stay hidden under the shadow of the Almighty. Does the parachute keep us safe? No. But I want you to understand, this is kind of what God is doing to you right now. Doing to all of his children. He said he will keep us safe under his wing. All we have to do is ask him. Believe him. You can get up, Rex. You don't be afraid anymore. Do you feel better? Do you feel a little better? Rexy? You feel, Rexy, you feel better? I hope so. Guys, I hope you feel better. Because when we read his word, the Bible says that that truth is what lights us up. It gives us light. So when we read his word, when we listen to songs like some of y'all's favorite songs is I am a child of God. You've got to remember that. That I am a child of God. Listen to some of those songs this week, and I know I'm, I'm, I'm almost positive you guys all have been. But continue to listen to those songs because that is his truth. That is his word. Not just listen to those songs, but you know what? Get your hands up in the air and say, God, I believe you. Good job, Rex. I believe you. I trust in you. And I'm getting as close as I can to physically touching you. Right? Just like that. You want to give me a hug? No, we can't do no, we can't do that yet. But what I want you to understand, God is the one that will give you peace. Ask him, he will protect you, believe him. Something else I want you to do this week. If there's any time that you're afraid, any time that you hear a family that has been sick lately? Did you know that, that God gives you the power? He wants us to declare his truth. The Bible says that out of the abundance, out of our heart, we will speak. Out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth speaks. So what you believe in your heart is going to come out. Those of you that watched Pastor Mike's message today, he was talking about uh, our feet and where we go. Wherever our feet take us, if we go to the grocery store, if we go down the hallway, if we're able to get outside, get some sunshine and some fresh air, wherever our feet go, he said, God said, if we have that armor of God, which I know all of you do, because you all have believed in him and you trust him, you've asked him into your heart and into your life, so he's with you. Your feet he said, I will guide your path. He said, when you acknowledge me, that means when you realize and you speak and you give me praise and you, you acknowledge me in all of your ways, he says, I will make your path straight. Have you ever gone down a little windy road sometimes or maybe in the woods and you're thankful for that path? Because if you get off that path, sometimes you might get in, into the woods, into the tall grass, but if you stay on that path that God says, I will make your path straight. He will lead you and he will guide you. He will protect you. The Holy Spirit lives inside of each one of you guys. And you have the power to declare healing into people's lives. We talk about this in kids' church all the time. Remember what we started in the kids' church room just a little while ago? About you being chosen by God. When a king says something, people around him come to attention, right? When the president speaks, a lot of times we stop what we're doing and we listen. What's going on? What is he saying? So the same thing with you. If you are chosen by God, which 1 Peter 2, 9 says that you are, you are chosen by God to be a king and a priest in this, in, in, in this nation, in our land. 
in Smith Center, in your home, you have the authority because you are chosen by him. Your mom and dad are over you, of course. But you have the same power of the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead living inside of you. So if you say, fear, leave my house in Jesus' name. Fear, leave my mind in Jesus' name. Healing, I declare your healing to be in people's lives today in Jesus' name. We have the power. Okay? You guys are awesome. Your faith amazes me. I miss every one of you. And I wish I could hug you all right now. But we will soon. Because we're going to get through this. You guys are going to go back to school. Maybe not this year. You have to wait till fall. But you're going to get back, get to go back to school. And you get to see your friends and your teachers. I know that you're missing everybody too. God is with you. He will never leave you. Never leave you. Never, never leave you. So I just want to say one more thing. Rexy, I'm so glad we got to see you. Are you guys glad to see Rexy? You know what? I kind of have a feeling he might be hanging around here more than usual. Would that be fun? That'd be okay, wouldn't it? Okay, what I wanted to say, tomorrow from 11 to 11.30, there are going to be some teachers. They're going to be out here in the front part of the church um, underneath the awning. They're going to be from 11 to 11.30, and they're going to be passing out lunch and also the breakfast, your breakfast for the next day. So if you guys come up, um, you could probably just, if you, I think they were going to allow you guys to walk up the thing if you needed to or, or drive with your parents, I believe. Um, so watch, parents, watch for Facebook posts from the school. Um, so we want to make sure y'all know that. So it's going to start tomorrow, Monday through Friday. Um, they're going to be here. They're also going to be at the high school and also the grade school that you guys can stop and pick up. Uh, lunches and breakfasts for the for the day and the next morning. So I love you guys, and we're gonna pray before we leave. And I want you guys to always believe that God is with you. In the next little while, I want you guys to watch out your door or your windows because. Rexy's going to be around, let's just say that. So, anyway, I want you to kind of be looking at your door windows. We're going to pray real quick, okay? You pray with me? Bow your heads. Father, I thank you again for this day. I thank you, God, for each boy and each girl that have been able to hear. I thank you, God, for the, for the new covenant kids. Thank you for their faith. Lord, thank you for their families. I thank you, God, and I, I have counted an honor and a privilege to be able to pour into their lives to draw out of them what you have placed within them. That faith will arise within them, God, and that they will be begin to speak truth to their situation around them. I thank you, Lord, for their families and we just declare a peace over their homes right now. We declare, Father, that your blessing will be with them this generation and generations to come. This thing is not over that we have only begun. I thank you, God, for choosing us to be your, your children, choosing us and dying on the cross for, for all of us, God. And I praise you for that. I thank you for keeping us from all harm. Thank you, God, for being the shadow, being that we can, can hide under the shadow of your wing. You are good. You are great. And you are amazing, Lord. And we love you.